The Bike Karma Bicycle Stories podcast is brought to you with support from The Frame and Wheel, helping you turn your cycling items into cash without the hassle. And AD Bikes, the modern face of Ostra Daimler bicycles. Become bike, become AD Bikes. This is episode 73. Hello and welcome to episode 73 of the Bike Karma Bicycle and Cycling Stories podcast. I'm your host, Tom Brown. In this crazy, messed up, beautiful world, the mission of the show is to bring all kinds of riders from BMX, mountain road, gravel, touring, bike mechanics, bike collectors, novices, and experts together to share stories and make some connections with other human beings. Stories have come from all over the world, with today's story coming from Los Angeles in the United States. If you've ever struggled with getting everything done that you feel you need to do, well, today's guest is a multitasking artistic inspiration. You have a billion things pulling for your time. And even if we just separate that down to podcasts, there must be like a gazillion, billion, gillion, gazillion, billion, billion podcasts out there that you could be listening to. But really, I appreciate you coming along with me for the ride of mine. Let's roll out. Sometimes I feel there aren't enough hours in the day to get stuff done. Our next guest does three things at once. They paint, they compose original music, sometimes singing, so I guess that's going to be four, and they do all this while riding a bike. Yes, that was all with an easel on a bicycle, along with a little keyboard thing, and he's painting and singing about it. I love that this guy exists. Hi, I'm uh, John Kilduff, a.k.a. Mr. Let's Paint. I'm an artist, uh, I paint, uh, and hence my name, Mr. Let's Paint. Yeah, I just make art, different art things, paintings mostly, in the uh, uh, performance realm at times. Lately, uh, I've been making some bicycle painting pieces where uh, I'm painting and playing music and bicycling at the same time. Um, I, I've actually been doing it off and on for about 10 years, I believe. But the music part is sort of a new add-on, if you will. Originally, I was painting and just bicycling at the same time. But uh, I'm, al- I'm always interested, I'm always fascinated by sort of this multitasking, kind of somewhat absurdity of it, of it all. I, I have kind of played with those ideas. Uh, I'm sort of best known for my treadmill work on a, a Let's Pay TV cable access show that I did from, uh, I'd say, started in 2001. And I guess it, well, I'm still doing them, but it kind of ended in 2008. Yeah, it, uh, it's cable access here in Los Angeles. They, they stopped doing cable access in 2008. But anyway, uh, I got into doing cable access actually in the mid 90s and uh, I did this other show actually but then I sort of segued into a how to paint show initially it was just a how to paint show for a few years and then I think it's just because I have an interest in in visuals and be part of the TV generation you know I don't really have uh you know my patience a lack of attention span if you will is uh is always a fleeting if you will and so I'm always kind of 
interested in a new a, a new wrinkle, a new thing to throw. You know, it, well, and also painting shows, how to paint shows are, are incredibly boring <laughs> um, by by nature. You know, because it's an introverted game in a sense. Painting, you know, it's it's more self discovery, so it doesn't translate so well. You know, cooking shows people get it because everybody needs to cook. You know, for one. And also, it's just I think maybe more maybe more visual and tactile. It's a quicker operation, I think, for results and just the whole. You know, painting can take forever. You know, <laughs> well anyway. So I've always been keen on on trying to make something that's so slightly interesting as opposed to boring. So I'm interested in that idea, the incorporation of, of doing some other activities. AE ultimately, uh, you know. Be, this thing, you know, becomes called, you know, multitasking, it, it just sort of makes it for a, an interesting uh, stew, uh, at least for myself and, and in, in some cases for, for the viewer. I introduced the treadmill, basically, with my How to Paint show. And then I, I said, well, okay, I'm on, on the treadmill and I'm painting. And well, it's, I got my extra, I have another arm here. I can do something else with my other arm. So I began cooking at the same time. So pa painting, cooking, and exercising. And, and in a sense, you know, it's sort of a holy trinity of the classic hobby thing, you know, and uh, with your with your free time. So if you mix them all together, you, you get this uh, crazy thing of, it's a wonderful high, frankly, to do it all like that. Um, I find, and, and and it's really a natural high. So I, I, I've always enjoyed that. Kind of stumbled upon it, basically. So I was I was doing all this treadmill working, and and I'm thinking with my show, and I'm thinking, well, let's try some other ideas. And so I brought in a stationary bicycle, and that was great. But it's all in studio. And I'm thinking, well, let's try to go outside and let's see if I can, you know, bicycle and actually juggle balance and see if it's even possible. And, I, and I've always bicycled, you know, all my life. Maybe at times I wasn't bicycling because I'm in Los Angeles and it's just a pain in the ass to ride a bicycle in L.A. usually. So anyway, I segued into discovering how to, if it's, you know, possible to paint while you're bicycling. And, and I kind of discovered it wasn't impossible. And it was, it was it was a challenge. You know, it was fun. It was exciting. It was invigorating. And then I'm thinking, well, I, I've got the painting going on now. I can kind of paint. And um, obviously, I'm bicycling. And I did try a few things, such as shaving. I tried to shave and bicycle and paint at the same time. You know, put some shaving cream on my face and shave and then paint. Well, that was one of my earlier pieces I did uh, probably about 10 years ago. I got a portable battery-operated blender. And, uh, and I subsequently blended a drink and then painted and bicycled. And I, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to doing that again because they have uh this was 10 years ago and the only battery operated portable blender that you could get was a, a coleman blender which was really crappy you know it just it didn't work and now they have uh, all these usb mini blenders it, there's like 20 different brands you can get you know so I, i'm gonna get one of those and try that out again So I did that. I, you know, you take a break. I do, I do this stuff, and other things come in, other ideas, projects, and and then you think, well, how am I going to keep doing these? This, you know, I'm not just going to be Mr. Bicycle all the time guy in painting. There is sort of a strange limitation with what you can achieve with the painting, and and so it's sort of maybe the results I'm not always excited about. Uh, the physical results. Uh, the video is that's a different story, obviously, because that does come into play. Of maybe that's really more of the art piece, you know. Frankly, it, it really turns out to be the case. 
Okay, so the blender, the blenders, uh, you know, I haven't, I tried that. I, I, you know, tried something else besides just painting. And then, you know, these little miniature uh, synth machines that they got for playing music are kind of smallish. And so I thought, oh, you know, this would be worth a try. And so I got me one of these, it's called a Coscillator. I think it's by Korg. Yeah, Korg Coscillator 2. I bought it off eBay. And it's, it's, all, it's like a size of a cell phone, you know, it's small. So I was able to kind of get that next to my palette so it wasn't going to take up too much room. And, and at the same time, I could still paint on the palette and then put paint on the canvas. That's kind of where I, what I've been playing with of late in terms of the music and painting. I have tried other musical instruments also, too, but I find that this one is sort of the most convenient because of the pocket size. You know, it's, you know, I'm kind of concerned. You would think that I were not worried about my safety, but I am worried about my safety uh, doing this because I don't want to, you know, fall or crash. And so you don't want to put such a gigantic footprint just for balancing purposes and also just for access to get to the brakes on the bike so you could stop in case you need to stop. It's, a, it's a, just a classic 10-speed, specialized. It's my old bike that I had, I bought, you know, off Craigslist for about $200 in 1986, I, I think, 85. I've had it since then, and I've tried a few different contraptions over the years. But yes, it's a, it's an easel that I've mounted to the handlebars. And lately I've been doing watercolors because it's a lot cleaner in terms of the mess. Uh, it's not so messy, but I originally was doing oil paints. Um, you know, people like oil paints. I have a, a background of painting plein air. It's a French term that means that you're out, out in the environment painting from real life. I don't know if a painting of still life is considered plain air, but you know, it's as opposed to working from a photograph is basically what you're saying when you say in plain air, but also in theory, I guess also you're outside in the environment and you're painting because it's there, you know, and it's just, it's such an exciting and invigorating kind of experience. And other, otherwise, you know, I played with maybe using some kind of reference and maybe have like a, a reference of, you know, like a painting of or a photo of something. But I'm not big on painting from photographs in the first place. And so then otherwise you have to make stuff up out of your mind. And that's that's an option. Uh, those are those are the three options as far as I can tell, you know. While you're biking, you're moving, you're going on. Where are you? Are you in a park? Are you on a yeah. bike trail? Yeah, it's a bike trail. Generally speaking, you're not running across any cars. So as the scenery changes, how do you reconcile that with well, what you want to paint? Yeah, you have to make a decision. There's, you, you just go with it. You go with it. And also, there's always another tree that could kind of feel as though it was sort of maybe that other tree that you actually put down before. You know, as long as it's similar, then there, there sort of becomes uh, things start to makes sense and you start making sense and going back to painting from real life i had done a series of painting uh freeway overpasses and you, and all the cars coming by you know and so again how do you paint those cars when they're moving you know well you just you just kind of make an attempt and then go from there and try to figure it out so that's the excitement So you're getting a totally different painting experience than somebody standing still because you know right. not just not just the novelty of being on the bike you're also getting this very different perspective of motion yes and you're introducing that wow well and, and and that's just how do you convey that excitement you know in a painting that's probably maybe never never really going to happen but <laughs> the uh it, it, but I'm trying to convey it, you know, and uh, and maybe it's from the videos that's actually showing that, probably more so, you know. You throw the music in on top of it as well. Yeah. So it's not just two things. you got to go for the trifecta. How would you describe your focus as you go well, through, like, say, a half an hour of this? 
Yeah. It, it, uh, it, you know, clearly it varies. Half the time I'm trying to figure out how to get a, a, an interesting sound on the machine. And then because of that, my painting is kind of suffering a little bit. You know? And that happens, you know. So it, as much as you want to, you, your brain does have to compartmentalize and make a decision on what to focus on, even though you're doing it all at once, you know. You just kind of attack one thing and then move on to the other thing. And what's wonderful about this, actually, is it's very freeing. And, and I know when it comes to painting or, or making art, people are so concerned about, they get so uh, locked into the struggle of things and they, they don't know how, to, they have a hard time f being free about it. And my thought, my thinking is, you know, sometimes not being so focused on whatever you're doing and just go with the flow has, has, has so much, uh, very powerful. It's probably not something that you want to use all the time necessarily, but boy, it, it's a wonderful experience and it's just free. You know, it's just really, really, really a freeing experience. All right, now there's a beautiful tree there. Look at that tree there. <laughs> Beautiful trees. Look at those trees coming to you, baby. We got some beautiful trees coming our way, looking right at us. Look at these beautiful trees. We're still keeping it light now. We're keeping it light. We're not going dark yet. Keep the light. Keep the, keep the light, baby. Keep it light. Keep it light, baby. Keep the light going. Oh, beautiful people, beautiful, beautiful trees. Okay, let's get some shadows there from that tree. Let's get the tree trunk there. There you go, get the tree trunk, baby. That's it. taken this to a whole nother level you go out on a bike so you're a cyclist you are painting a picture and you're making music so do you consider yourself a cyclist a performance artist a painter a musician yes <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a category destroying thing that you do but where where would you want people to describe you if they were to start, uh, I, I, I just I, I just like the word artist. I think is the best way to say it. Yeah, yeah. I, I always feel like I don't fit into any particular category. Uh, if anything, I'm I, I would be considered a painter. If you know, in terms of visual art, just because of the, of just the amount of stuff I've done and, and been doing all these years. Uh, and performance art is is sort of something that. I don't feel like I, I apply or it applies for me in the sense that I, you know, if you look at uh, other performance artists, I, I just, I don't feel like that's me, you know. I think at times I, I get close to that in terms of maybe getting an interesting, um, you know, uh, if you feel like that applies to me, then fine, you can apply it to me. I, you know, I just... All right, so I'm going to ask you some quick questions, yeah. and you can you can avoid them if there's any legal consequences. <laughs> no. Have you ever had an accident or crashed while you were biking and painting and being a musician at the same time? No, uh, well, I not not while playing music, but I did I did crash into a, a cyclone fence uh, while blending uh, and painting and bicycling once. Um, and uh, yeah, that wasn't a good feeling. No, I, I didn't. I didn't like that. And something about that cyclone fence off to the, you know, to the left of me somehow was calling my attention, and I sort of had to veer into it for some dumb reason. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just that one time, and 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 I and I do recall falling down. I go, uh oh, what's going to happen here? Did I, you know, hurt myself badly? You know, and 
luckily, uh, no. I was just, I, I, I was okay. And do you sell the paintings? Are people? Well, yeah. Are, do, I mean, have you had a show with them? I, not like a show, show really of as of yet. But I have, I have probably could be a hundred of them. There was an online gallery that did a little presentation of them once, and that, this was about ten years ago. Online magazine, I believe they did a little thing. I think it was called Better. Better. I, I could, I, I might have that wrong. I, I don't think they even make the the uh, publication anymore. Oh, okay. What are people's reactions, cyclist and non-cyclist, when they go past you doing all this? Uh, it's usually pretty positive. I, I, fi I find. However, I got to say, I, I try to actually avoid. You know, I, I don't go out on on the most busy days to do this. And just so happens, this bike path that I, I'm using, it's not the most busy. You know, it's not like Grand Central Station or anything. But you know, I stay away on the weekends. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not keen on really going by or uh, anything like that because I don't want to run into anybody uh, or vice versa. And it, but I'm not. I, I, it's usually a positive. It's usually positive. Someone thought uh, I had a laptop because they saw me from in front, so they couldn't see what I was doing. They thought maybe I was working on a laptop while I was bicycling, which I guess you could be doing, obviously, but. Um, I'm well aware of the, the concern of safety, and I would not uh, either be listening to, uh, you know, something in my headphones. You know, I think you, you would. You're best to have your your eyes and ears, you know, as as most alert as you can be. Yeah, I, I gotta say, you know, getting back to bicycling and safety, I I, I kind of really avoid bicycling, particularly in Los Angeles on the streets I um it's just and I used to ride my bike all over I I rode from downtown to, to the ocean like all the time you know and I'd be on the main streets and and you know a couple of times the car would try to run me off the road because you know whatever you know I, and and I wouldn't wear a helmet back then you know so but I, maybe it's because I'm older now and I'm, you know I think too when you're younger you you, you feel a little more invincible I think. What was your favorite painting that you've done on a bicycle and why? You know, I, I think there's really, because again, they're just sort of more abstract uh, images when it comes out at the end result seems to be abstract. It's hard to really de decipher or decide which one would be the most interesting uh, and the most ex exciting for myself or maybe the viewer. I kind of like one years ago where I was I did a portrait, a self-portrait of myself, uh, where the sh you could see the shadow on the the road uh, of myself, and so that was kind of fun, I guess. Um, looking back, that was kind of a neat uh, thing to, because then I was able to. Uh, that was a stationary, uh, in a sense, thing to to focus on, because that shadow stayed consistent, you know, as opposed to the moving landscape. Would people be able to see this on your Instagram account? Well, not that painting. Uh, I, well, I have to find it and, and post it. It's it's about ten years old that painting, so I don't know if I posted it. Well, I might have posted it like ten years ago on Instagram. If I've been on Instagram that long, I don't even know. If not, I could post it again. <laughs> That'd be awesome. So, where would yeah. people go if they want to see your art? Well, speaking of Instagram, you could follow me at Let's Paint TV. I uh, do a weekly little audio piece for uh, WFMU uh, radio station in New Jersey City in New Jersey called Wake and Bake. I'm usually uh, on every Friday at 7.50 a.m. Awesome. I actually have an open, my schedule is wide open, my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you well, so much. Nice it was a pleasure to talking to you. Okay, very good. Thanks. See you. Bye.
now it's time for the mid-roll gratitudes. I sincerely thank everybody who takes the time to tell me if they appreciate anything on the show, whether it's somebody else sharing a story or just the way I put things together. I really, really get buoyed up by people just taking the time to say, hey, thanks for doing that. I don't need it, but it feels great. What really helps the show is by following the show on any social media that helps to raise us in the search algorithms, those nasty algorithms, which keep us from just saying what we want and getting rid of things we don't want, but it does help. So thank you very much for following anywhere you follow. For people following on Podbean, which is the place where we host the podcast online, thank you very much for PBGC 4DF 9CM 5NS. I hope that has meaning for you, that that random association of letters and numbers looks random to me. Whoever you are, thank you very much for following on Podbean, as well as Kirill Vakaranu. I'm going to say it a couple different ways. Kirill Vakaranev. Kirill Vakaranev. Harenev. I don't know how to say your name, but I do appreciate you. So, Kirill, thank you very much for following on Podbean. The other thing that's really helpful is people leaving reviews anywhere that they're able to, following on multiple platforms. If you listen on iTunes, but you also follow on YouTube, that's super helpful. It's free and it's really easy to do. I know you get overwhelmed every time you hear it, but hitting that button really helps shows. I'd also like to thank people who've asked for and who responsibly deal with the stickers that I send out for free. If you would like a free sticker pack, just email me at bikekarmaguy at gmail.com and I will send that out to you free anywhere in the world. When you get those stickers, please place them responsibly. Don't sticker bomb a tree in nature. But if you see a place on a trail that already has a bunch of stickers all over it, yeah, you can add the Bike Karma one to the mix. You could pop them on your bike, on your water bottle. You can pass them out at your next club ride. Just say you're going to do that. I'll send you enough. Just don't stick them all over an ambulance outside your neighbor's house or a police car. The point of the stickers is to raise awareness of the show without necessarily making anybody upset. I want to thank the supporters that I have on Patreon. It is a small but wonderful group of people who have taken that extra step to donate a dollar or more a month. This helps me to pay for the cost of the show. I'm not looking to make an income off of this or get rich. But these nice people like the show, and so they send me a buck here and a buck there. So thanks very much to those people who do. And you can join them at patreon.com by searching up Bike Karma. I sincerely appreciate whether it's monetary or just doing free stuff to help out the show. I appreciate it all. No mid-roll thank you would be complete without a big shout out to Fred Thomas. Fred runs several bicycle endeavors. One is the frame and wheel, helping you get more time, space, and cash. Have some quality used bicycle parts, maybe some takeoffs, maybe some things that you upgraded, perhaps a really expensive cycling jersey that you never ended up wearing, perhaps even a whole bicycle. Well, reach out to Fred. Unless you like dealing with crazy people in the internet, Fred is an expert at getting that stuff sold for you. He'll help you figure out how to get it to him. And the next time he contacts you, it'll be when he sends you out the check. You could also use those proceeds to buy other stuff or apply it to a new bike from his other company, AD Bikes. Fred revived the AD Bikes brand. He did it out of love. He loved to ride those AD bikes back in the day. He was a racer and you can still follow him on Strava where he is a pretty capable guy on two wheels. Fred essentially brought back the brand out of love. The colors, the logo, but he also wanted to bring it into the 21st century. He has a brand new bike called the Key Steel Frame. It's a steel gravel bike that's handcrafted in the United States and well worth a look. If you haven't already, please check out the Frame and Wheel and AD Bikes. If you like or follow, please say, hey, Fred, thanks for helping support the show. And finally, a big thank you to all of those local bike shops. You know the ones like Bikes at the Basin in Australia, Bicycle Seller in Arizona and Airline Cycles in Connecticut. These are those shops still trying to be there for the community in 2023. And it is friggin hard out there. Between the manufacturers and suppliers messing with you, to online retailers, to big box stores, 
those fair trying to eke out a living local bike shop always there for the cycling community they are having a hard time so when you have a chance please support them as they try and figure out all the little things they need to do to survive for the next hundred years and the most important thank you of all is thank you for listening now back to the show You were telling me about this thing you wanted to do on a themed ride. You wanted to have a haunted ghost ride. A real, a now, haunted rail trail ride. What, yeah. were you, what were you going to do with this suit? <laughs> I have a Creature of the Black Lagoon suit. And my dream for two years is when this rail trail's ready to go across the causeway on Lake Colby with a haunted rail trail ride. And of course, there'll be witches with a cauldron, little children of the corn in the cattails. There's going to be a zombie dance at the turnaround. But I want to personally come out of Lake Colby in my creature of the Black Lagoon suit as the bicycle riders come by. And that's my dream. So yeah, that's what I love about John. He pulled this off. He is totally a goofball kindred spirit. Apparently he wore a diving suit and then over the top of it, he wore his Creature from the Back Lagoon outfit. It's the first year of the ride and he hopes it's going to get bigger. But as folks approached a certain point along the causeway, boom, out of the water comes the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Reports say that some children were a little scared to go past him, as were some dogs. Although the creature made no sign of aggression, maybe the friendly cousin to the one from the movie. And with the temperatures up there, it's probably too cold to chase people around too much. Witnesses say that someone set off some fireworks and this seemed to disturb the creature a little bit. I'll let you picture that in your mind and also file away that John is a method actor. But if you are anywhere near Saranac, New York, it's right near Lake Placid and well worth the trip. It is an adorable little time capsule of Main Street, USA, but better because it's still there and it's alive. There's great coffee, there's cafes, there's a good music store, there's a bike shop on the front and the bike shop in the back. And the town hall, if you like architecture, just just walk in there and take a look at this building. It's amazing. And now this wonderful bike path. So if you want to go antiquing, have a great bike ride and then go have dinner at a wonderful restaurant, then stroll up and down Main Street doing a little shopping. This is the place for you. And if you get a chance to meet John, he's a force of nature, just a really positive guy who could help you out with any type of outdoor sports and get you pointed in the right direction. And where do people find you if they want to check you out and maybe check out going on this Halloween ride? Yeah, we're in Saranac Lake, New York, in the Adirondack Mountains. We're 77 Main Street in Saranac Lake. The back of the building is a completely different address, 52 Dorsey. That's where the magic happens. That's where our service area is. But if you get on Main Street, 77 Main, right next to Origin Coffee, it's a short Main Street. Come on down, and uh, we will show you where to where to take your adventures from here. We want to expand this and be ready to work with adventure touring and the rail trail. And uh, what do we tell everyone? Don't forget to use your human power. Use your human power. (laughs) And you'll see that big new Bike Karma sticker right in the window. Right on the front door. (laughs) All right. Thanks a lot, John. Thank you. And now, a holiday message that has meaning throughout the year. Scrooge! Jacob? Jacob Marley? You were my writing partner in life. Why are you back here now dressed like this? Why are you all wrapped up in your bike chain? And why do you have tubes wrapped all around you? There must be like a dozen sets of tubes just wrapped around your body. What the heck's going on? Scrooge! 
I forgot to do my ABC quick check before my ride. Uh, I know. Nobody has time for that. No, Scrooge. Safety is our business. Every time we ride, it only takes a couple of minutes to do an ABC quick check before you get out on the road or trail. Wait, we still haven't talked about why you're here, why you're glowing, stuff like that. Enough A is for air. Squeeze your tires every time before you ride. Pinch them on the sidewall to see if they have pressure. Every few rides, actually check the pressure with a gauge. Come on, Jacob. You always used to laugh at that. And look at me now, Scrooge. B is for brakes. Quickly check your brake handles to make sure they don't go all the way down to the bar. Inspect pads, rims, rotors. If you have rim brakes, make sure the pads aren't touching the tire. I mean, it's all fairly common sense, right? Yes, Scrooge, but do you do it every time? Thought so. C! C is to check your chain line. Make sure your chain is intact. Make sure your derailleur is not off askew. Make sure it's not making funny noises when you pedal it around. Well, Jacob, all this only takes a couple of minutes before each ride. Tops. Easy for you to say, Scrooge. If I had but known, I could have avoided a world of hurt. Quick! is to quickly check your wheels and how they're attached to the bike. Whether you have quick releases, through axles, or old-timey nuts, make sure your wheels are attached to the bike and fully into their dropouts. Okay, uh, all right. You're freaking me out a little bit. Is there anything else? Yes, Scrooge. I like to pick up my bike about four inches off the ground and drop it. I listen for any unusual noises. And for the first couple of minutes of the ride, I pay attention to the bicycle. Does it feel normal? I try the brakes. I listen for rattling or scraping. Do all these things, Scrooge, and you will avoid a fate like mine! And just like that, the spirit of Jacob Marley was gone. This has been a public service announcement from the Bike Karma Bicycle and Cycling Stories podcast. Do your ABC quick check every time before you ride. Now back to the show. Thanks for coming along on the ride and another episode of the Bike Karma Bicycle and Cycling Stories podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't checked out the back catalog, you'll find stories of every bicycle genre. If you don't find something that you can imagine, I'm probably working on trying to get somebody to tell a story about it. Right now, you can go back and listen to stories about a mountain biker finding a body in the woods, a BMX flatlander dealing with getting older, hear one of the best bicycle mechanics in the world talk in plain language that anybody can understand about the path of learning how to work on your bike. So like I said at the beginning, the mission of the show is to bring all kinds of people from the bicycle world together and maybe, just maybe, make some connections. I'd like to thank Keller Glass and the band Mobjack for our opening and closing theme music. You can hear what he's up to lately at kellerglass.com. While the other music is royalty-free and attribution-free, I do want to acknowledge and thank those musicians as well for helping us to bring life to these stories. Not all stories have to be crazy outlandish. They could just be something very meaningful to you, and I'm sure people would connect with them. If you have an idea for a story, comments, critiques, suggestions, or would like to join our very responsible and respectful sticker army, I basically send you a pack of free stickers and ask you not to make anybody mad with them. If you'd like any of that, please email me at bikekarmaguy at gmail.com. That's one word, bikekarmaguy at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to send that out to you. Apart from the music, the Bike Karma podcast, logos, our content are all the intellectual property of Tom Brown, and all those copyrights and trademarks, all those rights are asserted and reserved. For those longtime listeners, I really appreciate your patience and want to spend a special thank you and good luck to Captain Walker's Bicycles from Australia, wishing them the very best on whatever their next chapter is going to be. As for the rest of you, until next time, keep it wheel. Keep it wheel.